welcome to episode 11 uh guys uh i noticed that in the last episode episode 10 a lot of people didn't watch the episode i think maybe because i changed the name of this talk and i called it a podcast let me explain before we get into today's subject i called it a podcast because on youtube they've launched a new uh, platform for podcasts and because we talking here in this broadcast i felt that it's better we just call it a plat- podcast and be able to 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 edit there on that on that on that platform please guys come back we're still doing the same thing we haven't changed anything we're not interviewing people here we are basically talking about teaching uh, teaching group exercise and and any form of other fitness so yes Today, guys, I had flu as well. I didn't record. I was supposed to record on Thursday, on Wednesday evening. I did not record anything. I My voice was gone. I was very, 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 very sick. Uh, I feel a lot better now. Just that I still feel that irritation here. Actually, even after this, there is a pill that I must take for, for my truth because I'm teaching uh, this morning at, at Foda World. We have an event there. So let's get into it. So today we're going to talk about technique. Uh, this is this is uh, for me. It's one of the deal breakers or deal makers when it comes to cardio box instructors. If you are an instructor and you cannot punch, I don't think that you should call yourself a box instructor. You know, it's like if you're an instructor and you cannot create a step movement or you cannot dance, like I'm one of the people that cannot really dance. That's why you won't see me teaching Zumba, you know, because I cannot dance to save my life. I don't know, man, we've got a lot of ends here. Now, as I'm recording, they are one of them is walking on my cover. So you see something that that's passing it's an end. I think we are on top of a colony of ends. So now in this from this episode, maybe for the next five episodes, we're going to break down technique. We we're going to go through a separate movements and 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 and, and, and talk about how they are done. I'll also make time and go and record uh, the record myself demonstrating them how they are done because it's very important. But right now we're just going to talk about it and and I will explain how each of the movements are done. I believe you should be able to understand what I mean even if you cannot see my feet. Ooh. It's a Friday, baby. Right, so these are the there are a couple of things that makes knowing how to do technique a good. Number one, you don't just get to know how technique is done. The first one of the things that you learn is the stances. There are two stances. Front stance and a combat stance. Other people will call it a squat stance and a lunge stance. Others will call it a horse stance, fighting stance, whatever you want to call it. But basically, a front stance, you've got both feet next to one another, meaning you are standing square, knees slightly bent, toes pointing in front at the target. Fighting stance, you take one foot to the back, leave a small gap here, I remember uh, Gordon called it a river. You leave a small gap in between your legs. You've got this foot pointing at your target, the foot in front. The one at the back, you've got a couple of things that you can do with it. You can stand on the toes of the foot at the back, but it has to spawn point plus minus 45 degrees. And, and then leave that small gap for balance as in open your legs it's like uh, gerald says uh, it must be as if there is a river in between your legs right 
so you stand like this so these are your feet the other one pointing slightly that way the other one pointing in front make sure feet are not directly behind one another they are like this you know you get me that way even if someone pushes you you still have balance you can still maneuver properly right so that those are the two stances now when you know technique that's the first thing you go to learn the stances then karate guys will tell you you sit on the squat open your legs wider and flat both feet uh, <clears> taekwondo <throat> guys will tell you 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 are on your toes throughout in out because they do those type of things boxing guys will tell you something else Muay Thai guys will tell you heavy on the back foot, light on the front foot for checks on the kicks and be able to do a tip. It, it, it doesn't matter what style you're doing, but all of them fighting stance, you stand like that. Now, as you are standing like that, you've got the lead side and you've got the rear side. So the lead side will be the, if you are right handed. Or if you're standing with your left in front and the right at the back your left will be your lead if your left is in front then it's your lead side why because it's in front and your and your rear side will be your rear side why because it's at the back lead rear in front back yeah and then when you are in that stance the lead hand that is straight is called a jab the lead hand that is straight is called a jab. The rear hand that you thrown straight is called a cross. Jab, cross. Now when you do a cross, because the punch is going across the body, you twist the hips, you rotate the knee, you rotate the ankle. Rotate the torso and twist the shoulders as well. Keep the elbow always from here, bring it in. So a punch, especially a straight punch, is shoulder extension, elbow extension, and rotation of the arm. All of them keeping the shoulder close. It's not shoulder abduction. There is no abduction. It's, it's, the elbow stays in. Extend the shoulder. Extend the elbow and rotate the arm at the same time. So from here, there, from there, back here. There, back here. This is the easiest thing you can do in the world. This is a cross punch. The only difference is that now you rotate the body as well when you are punching. You rotate. Rotation, release the heel from the ground, take it over rotate the ankle rotate the knee rotate the hips rotate the torso take the shoulders right and you do that violently so right wow. that's where you get that to get that power out and it has to come right from here to the target and back from the target from there same as a jab Shoulder extension, elbow extension, rotation of the arm, there and back. Elbow is in, there, back. There, back, there, back. There, back, there, back. Not any wishy wish. Just that. It's an easiest thing in the world. All you need to do now, from what I've just told you, you just go and practice. Mm, there, back here. There, back here. Where do you look? Through the knuckles. These two knuckles. These two big knuckles. This is where you look. That's what you hit with. The two knuckles. Boom! And back here. Boom! And back here. Don't hit with this. These are too small. Hit with this big two. Eh? Boom! Back here. Boom! Back here. Look through the knuckles. Whatever you are hitting, see it. Through the knuckles. Rotation here. Jab, jab, jab. Most of the time, a jab will have a step. Step in and bring it back. Because why you use the jab to gauge the distance between you and your and your opponent or your imaginary opponent. And 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 it's a very easy thing. And I believe that is any any boxing instructor can learn it. 
learn technique and you will see that there's no need for you to dance. I tell you the truth, man. You know how to punch, you won't see a need to dance. You don't have to impress anybody. There are two things that knowing the correct technique does. The first one, it makes the movement effective. It makes the movement effective. It means now you get to be, you can punch harder. Why? Because you're punching safe. You can benefit more. Why? Because you are not working here. You are working here. Again, if you're working here, what are you doing? You are actually injuring your shoulder. Keep you play boxing. Yes, because you're not punching right. You want to do all these things that are being done around in the world, whereas you haven't learned the, the most basic thing, which is punching. Punching. The most, most basic. There are six of these punches. Okay, let me finish what I was saying first. I, I think that one of the reasons why I was procrastinating making this episode is because I'm very emotional when it comes to this topic. Because for me, if you can't punch, you can teach. Right. So the first thing it does is that it makes everything you're doing effective. And, 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 and when it's effective, people can benefit more. It also makes it safe. Because when something is safe, it means that they can train over and over and over again. And that makes the whole process effective. Because if they, they, they get injured, then now they can come to the gym next week. But if they don't get injured because you taught them the correct technique, then they can be in the gym over and over again. And now this is where now when we get to coaching, that's where you will learn how you help people to get the correct technique. How do you coach the correct technique or how do you coach a class? Because teaching is not just about being on stage. It's about being on stage and coaching people to do the right, the correct things. But in a school school, why? Because we coach when we are teaching. You understand? So what type of an instructor do you want to be? Do you want to be a complete instructor or do you want to be a stage man? You understand? If you are an instructor and you go on stage and you don't talk, then you are not teaching. You are just performing, you are a stage guy. You are the stage guy. And stage guys, Papelela, it's in their peers. No company is going to see your work and say, wow, that's good work. And the people who are going to praise you are people who don't understand what they, they, they are talking about. Because these days, unfortunately, even in some companies, there, there are some managers don't have a good clue what's happening these days. They are Baham and Moya. You understand? Baham and Moya, all they want is a following. If you've got a following, you've got everything according to them. And the following, unfortunately, they also don't understand. And, and, and that leaves us that, to be honest, I take myself as somebody that understands because I took my time to understand this thing. And I get worried myself do I say it's their own baby do I go and confront them no not a good idea also because I've got a lot of enemies in this fitness industry that we have just because I was speaking out in the beginning I would tell you nah, no that is not it that is not it and and I was innocently doing it like that I was for me I come from the military that's how we did things where, where I come from come from the rural areas. That's how we did things in Makai. If we do wrong, this is how this is done. If we do we have bachas, I don't know we have bachas. Even in the military. I was working at a school. As a sergeant in the military, 
if someone is doing something wrong, I had to correct it right there and then. And unfortunately, I got to a place that has got a lot of narcissists. I'm sorry to say it like this. Fitness industry is full of people who believe that they should go to uh, did I just swear? I hope I'm going to bleep that out. But yeah, they believe that whatever it is that comes in front is gold or diamonds. Everything that they say Bona, should happen, even though they understand nothing about it. Yeah, this is starting to become your rant now. And I don't want it to be one. Let me calm down. So, a fit. All I want to say is that learn these things you don't have to learn them from me but make time go and learn them go and learn how to do these punches i will go through them in this podcast understand but if you don't like me at least take this from me go and learn go and learn know how to do them then you will understand what i what i've always been talking about I personally don't hate anyone in the industry. But I've got a lot of haters. And not because others they hate me, but they've never even seen me. They don't even know who I am. Because of some people who go around and talking nonsense about people. And I think that this is one of the platforms where I'm going to address such things, you know. But on a lighter note, not too much. Because I I think I'm too old to be. Yep, yep, and unfortunately, nah, but I'm back on a battle. But in general, but some behavior, but I'm not being here old. As an, as an, as an old guy in the industry, I feel that it is my duty to to help the ones that are coming in, show them the way. Even Gabo Abaketa. I learned the angel. In God, Bangati, I were never taught. Today, no one can lie and say they were never taught because I've got a whole series that I'm doing that is helping people to learn how to teach. Because people just watch videos and just follow whatever is being done. The worst part, the karate guys, guys, stop. Stop, stop, stop that thing that you're doing. Karate guys, they go there, they do all these things. And like, yeah, the technique is good, but what is this? What kind of choreography is this? But I think that is something that I'm going to talk about in the next episode. Right? Let me come down. Let me come back. Today, we're talking about technique. It's a very sensitive subject. So I taught you two things so that you don't lose me. You've got two stances, front stance and a combat stance. And I showed you how that on that front stance, if you're in a combat stance, you've got a lead side and you've got a rear side, right? So this is a jab, it's punch number one. This is a cross from the rear side, it's punch number two. How it's done? extension of the elbow extension of the shoulder elbow on the rib before it goes out so it stays in the same line rotation torso shoulders hips knees ankles and release the heel from the ground and that's what we spoke about today and that's how it's done and unfortunately there is no other cross except that so another thing that's important that you should remember a punch is a push and a pull you look through the knuckles you push the target and pull immediately why do you pull you pull to get back to a defense position as quickly as possible you don't do this boom boom ah, you go boom boom you understand boom as quickly as possible boom as quickly as possible boom 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 learn big time get it when you're creating your choreography you're helping people then i said if you do the correct technique the program that you're doing becomes effective people really really get to get the benefits you get from fighting and also from practicing how to fight and also 
you become safe. Right. Another important thing is that when we say box, it means as fitness people, we went and said, we like what the boxing guys are doing. Why? Because they are nicely ripped and everything. Oh, apart from, apart from the running that they do, the skipping that they do, the lifting of weights that they do, they actually walk in the gym and hit the bag. And oh, there's something else that they're doing, which is shadow boxing. We like this. You can put some music on this and punch to the music. That's what we are doing, right? And then we get there, we create movements that make sense. Movements that you can use in a boxing or kickboxing ring. Copy what they are doing. Hmm? This is a beautiful program. The moment you start dancing in this, you are doing high And it's a nice program, high I also teach it, but can we at least try to fill up those dance spaces with, with more of these things. That way we'll have a box program in South Africa that works. Because currently I get worried. But who am I? Yeah, and people will give you all sorts of answers. And our people, instead of engaging you on a subject, they will engage you personally, which means there is no way we are going to go anywhere because personally we all have our flaws and if we're going to now take is it does it this is in it's not going to help anyone because why the subject that we're talking about it still remains still there it's still there, it hasn't been solved. And it won't be solved. Why? Because people don't want to. And why people don't want to? Because they lack skills of teaching. All the people that don't want to solve these things, they don't have the skills. They don't. If they had the skills, they would be out there and say, look, let's do this thing. But they know, I can't excite people if I can't teach. How, how do you? That's what they think, that what they're doing is going to excite people. And unfortunately, it's just going to excite those people who... <laughs> let, 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 me not say, let me not say what I was about to say. But yeah, they will excite those people. Fortunately or unfortunately, there will always be people who will follow the same thing, be it it's good or it's bad. And if it's marketed well, loads and loads and loads of people will support it i i went to pe uh, with my own money uh, got to pe put a wall and i was helped by Yeah, all in PE. Took my time. Went to do a workshop for free. I taught them the right thing. A few months down the line, I was surprised. When I saw PE, but I understood. I was like, you know what? I cannot make them to see it with my point of view uh, but to be honest they messed it up they messed everything up and one of the places that I was looking at going towards Cape Town then I saw this other group unfortunately I'm not going to mention names I saw this other group Down and they are doing all this zindos of daga daga. I felt it as like oh yeah. They they've also fallen. To be honest, hey, actually, clean and say this pollen or whatever it is. They all forgot. 
ya sebenza guys ya sebenza ya sebenza a lot and lots and lots of people are following this thing and uh, it's not going to end uh, but we will always be those voices I personally don't approve of it I'll never do it I feel that Ihailo gives us enough time to dance. Now, now Ihailo instructors, they, they don't know what to do anymore because, in fact, in Ihailo, people are doing step on the floor. But that's, we will deal with that when we get to Ihailo. Because I can teach Ihailo. We'll deal with that when we get to Ihailo. That actually, the Ihailo that you see is like this is step on the floor. The step that you see is, yeah, people are flying. So, hey, my fit. Uh, unfortunately, there, there's nothing we can do about it. We just have to watch and, and hope they break enough legs. Injured. And unfortunately, a lot of people that have been in aerobics, I know a lot of people that were in aerobics before, they've left aerobics. They are now running and, and maybe they think well it's because they've seen everything they've seen everything and, and I'm proud to say I've been able to to train a particular group of people that amongst them now there is a lot of instructors and I would say even though not every one of them is 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 doing the right thing the correct way but they are closer to the truth than most of the people out there uh, yeah uh, i just I, i'm still not going to mention names i don't know i don't know where i'm going with the with this last part but i just think that like i think this should be a separate video yes. <laughs> thank you very much guys please subscribe and I didn't know that you are this video is 27 minutes. I think I'm going to cut some of the things in. Have a great one.